sweeping audiences off their feet. How sophisticated wire work is used to create an aerial sword battle in Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. Uncovering the secrets behind an explosive carousel ride in a sci-fi classic Logan's Run. And how an inventive knockout punch hurdles Brad Pitt into a new dimension. Next on Cinema Secrets. From the beginning, movies have been wired for action. In 1912, French filmmaker Georges Millet used hidden wires to animate his Arctic monster in the classic short film, Conquest of the Pole. But I'll be darned if I'm gonna waste any ectoplasm doing it. As movies evolved, the craft became more sophisticated. In 1937, wire work allowed an invisible man in the movie Topper to change a tire, dumbfounding audiences in the process. Wire work took a giant leap forward in the post-apocalyptic world of the 1976 classic Logan's Run. The technique is pivotal to the film's carousel, a bizarre end-of-life ritual at the center of the utopian society. It had to be spectacular. It had to give you the spectacle that you expected from, let's say, an arena in Rome. A thousand extras surrounding it, yelling, renew, renew, go, go, and watching them die and, uh, and, and realizing that this was part of the ritual that, uh, of the society into which they, they, they had been born. Director Michael Anderson recruited special effects producer Glenn Robinson to create the movie's futuristic vision. Robinson had just dazzled Hollywood with his work on the 1975 remake of The Hindenburg. His father who was in the business, and so he basically learned a lot of it from his father, like I learned a lot from my dad about the business. For Glenn's son, Ray, Logan's run was a chance to work on his first feature film with his father. He recalls the pressure his dad was under to push the limits of Hollywood engineering to build the carousel. He wanted to have 18 people flying through the air all at once. And I think they went to him hoping that they could get, you know, half or a quarter of that. And then he came back and said, yeah, we can do it. It was also an important film for Lucinda Strub. With Glenn Robinson's support, she broke the gender barrier by becoming Hollywood's first female effects technician. It is. He didn't treat me any differently. He only treated me differently because I was a very hard worker. For Straub and the rest of the crew, it takes months of hard work to assemble the revolving grid that will suspend the actors more than five stories above a spinning platform. To ensure the two giant wheels spin at exactly the same speed, Robinson's team devises a clever way to use one power source and a continuous cable to drive both turntables. Powerful engines mounted to the rotating grid allow each performer to be winched up and down on piano wire independently. We went the extra mile, I mean, or 20 miles, that a lot of people would say, ah, oh, you know, forget it, we can't do it, it's too much work. But even when people go that extra distance, things can still go wrong. Michael Anderson recalls a rehearsal that took a disastrous turn. I remember Glenn Robinson coming in, we were shooting something else, and he said, there's a bit of an emergency. He said, all the wires are tangled up. And the fire brigade, the studio fire brigade, had to come in with long ladders and un unhook each and bring everyone down. When filming begins, safety is a priority. The flyers are spread further apart to prevent any more dangerous mid-air accidents. Tension on the set is high as the performers lift off. They were just sort of nebulous people out there in the same costume going around and around. keeping track of your person. And so you, we had two guys watching every person with a stop button. We didn't want to keep them too far off the ground because, you know, there's, there's nothing that we could, we couldn't hide any padding or anything down there for safety. Aware that there's no room for error, 
Glenn Robinson's hand is on the master kill switch throughout the shoot. As soon as the hands came off the switch, the disc brakes would engage and it would lock the flyers whatever altitude they're at and it would also lock the carousel from spinning anymore. But this time, the carousel works and the crew prepares to detonate explosive packs strapped to the actors' fireproof costumes for the scene's finale. They wanted to have a big spark because then that would be their, their transition point where the person disappeared from. One by one, the performers vanish in a fiery flash. It's a shocking end to the film's end-of-life ritual. Robinson's carousel has performed flawlessly. He calls himself a nuts and bolts man, but he's not. He's far more than that. It was a very complex and scene, and Glenn uh, um, was the master. He's a mechanical wizard. A mechanical wizard who used traditional Hollywood effects to create an Oscar-winning glimpse into the future. Logan's Run was just one of four films that earned Glenn Robinson Academy Awards for special effects within a span of three years. It's an unprecedented feat in Hollywood history. What are the names of the other three films? The answer when Cinema Secrets returns. AMC's DVD TV is your favorite movies from every angle. Glenn Robinson began his award-winning streak in 1974 when he was recognized with an Academy Award for his revolutionary miniature work in the hit disaster film, Earthquake. Over the next two years, Robinson would win three more special effects Oscars for his work on the Hindenburg, the 1976 remake of King Kong, and Logan's Run. On set,